they know, like, if something crazy is going on, if they send it to me, I'm a, I'll make sure I get out there, like, as far as this video.com is concerned. Yeah, yep. <laughs> and those other properties. So they sent it to me. I really kind of felt like those photographs were not happening because of Cassie. I felt like they was happening because of Puffy. Right, right. Oh, wow. It's open season on Diddy, and if anyone is making the most of it, it's 50 Cent. Diddy has been forced into hiding following the recent string of allegations against him. From Cassie's lawsuit to close comrades blowing the whistle on his nasty business over the years, it's been a PR nightmare for the hip-hop mogul. However, what most people don't know is that Fifth was on to Diddy before anyone even knew about the skeletons in his closet. Back in 2010, Fifth jumped on an interview and spilled the deets on how Diddy treated Cassie. However, back then, 50's bombshell interview faded into oblivion, but now the landscape has changed. Diddy no longer holds the same position in the industry he did back then, and it seems like everyone has something to say against him, especially 50, who could very well become the reason for Diddy in an orange jumpsuit. Just what crucial evidence did Fifth get his hands on? And is it enough to land Diddy in jail? Let's find out. Puffy's like a bitch. <laughs> oh, shit, man. What'd he say? <laughs> to describe Puffy in one word is a bitch. Fifth and Diddy are sworn enemies. For years, Fifth has been dragging Diddy's name through the mud, hoping to dethrone him. When the G Unit member isn't calling Diddy gay, he's taking shots at him for his wild parties. However, his efforts proved to be in vain until Cassie entered the picture. The R&B singer sent shockwaves through Diddy's world by filing a lawsuit against him towards the end of 2023. From years of physical abuse to forcing her into bed with male escorts, Cassie spilled the beans on everything in the most chilling detail. While Cassie settled the matter outside of court with a $30 million settlement, her lawsuit opened the floodgates. Fans started combing through Diddy's socials with a fine-toothed comb, putting everything under the magnifying glass. Suddenly, that video of Diddy scolding Cassie while she was covered with a blanket wasn't funny anymore. What you gotta say now? What you gotta say now? You ain't got shit to say. However, if there was one person who wasn't shocked, it was 50 Cent. He knew about Diddy's abuse long before anyone. In fact, back in 2010, Fifth tried pulling back the curtains on the relationship, but his words were chalked up to that of a jealous rival. During an interview with DJ Who Kid on Shade 4550, Cent revealed that back in the day, he received some explicit pictures of Cassie on his phone. Shocked, he rang up Diddy, asking him for an explanation. Send me the girl pictures, like pictures of this girl, like, not the shit that y'all saw. Worse, way worse. <laughs> wow. God, are you kidding me, yo? Like penetration pictures and, and... Nah, come on. Instead, Diddy turned the tables on Fifth, questioning him on how he got his hands on those pictures. But Fifth didn't know. Though unaware of the source, a lingering intuition told Fifth that something was not right. Even I called the nigga, I said, yo, you really, you fucking with this girl? Like, you really, like, you like her like that? And he was like, yeah, that's, that's my girl. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna send you something. You look at it, you call me back. Oh, I man. sent him the photos, the pictures and everything. And the nigga called back and was like, yo, thanks, man, about us tonight, y'all, I really appreciate that. Yo, where you get these shits from? It dawned on him that the sender likely intended for those pictures to become public. And given his rivalry with Diddy, the sender thought that Fifth would be the best person. While the interview was buried at the time of release, it resurfaced once more following Cassie's lawsuit, forcing everyone to pay heed to Fifth's warnings. Given all that's been revealed about Diddy, there's no doubt that he took those pictures. According to Cassie's lawsuit, Brother Love would force her into intimate encounters with male escorts. He would hire male hookers, drug them, and Cassie, and filmed the encounters all the while pleasing himself in a corner. The gravity of these accusations paints a deeply troubling image of Diddy's behavior and raises serious questions about his actions and the impact on those involved. Diddy most likely kept these pictures to blackmail Cassie. It's why Cassie stayed with Diddy for nearly a decade. What's even more shocking is that fans should have suspected something when he offered Cassie a 10-year music deal. It's most likely that Diddy used the deal to rope in Cassie before trapping her in a cycle of abuse. You know, the only thing I really ever looked at was like, dang, I always looked at like, what if she just came to him because she wanted to be an artist and she thought that she can sing and 
he thought that she was beautiful. And instead of entertaining uh, what her dreams were about in her eyes, he wanted to date her and made her his girlfriend. So it's like, that's a, that's. A and for anyone finding it hard to believe Cassie's and 50's words, let's focus on the fact that it's not Diddy's first rodeo. Diddy has been pulling the same thing with countless women before Cassie. Following Cassie's lawsuit, Jane Doe also stepped forward, accusing Diddy of drugging and essaying her when she was a college student. According to court documents, Diddy and Jane Doe had a common group of friends. What's more, she had the opportunity of starring alongside Diddy in a few of his music videos. While the relationship between the two had been professional, things took a turn in January 1991, when Jane was on a holiday break in New York. During her stay, she reluctantly agreed to dinner with Diddy at Harlem's Wells restaurant. Now, Jane wanted to wrap up the dinner and head home. However, Diddy had other plans. He forced Jane to accompany him to his music studio in his car. It was only when Jane stepped out of the car at the studio that she realized that Diddy had spiked her drink since she couldn't walk. Diddy then took her back to his place where he essayed her and videotaped the encounter. Following the incident, Jane proceeded to not go to the hospital or the police out of fear. What's more, she didn't have a clue about Diddy recording the encounter until Devante Swing, a member of the R&B group Jodeci, stopped by days later to tell her about how he and the staff at the studio had seen her sex tape. Upon asking how many people viewed the video, Swing replied, everyone. Swing could have easily testified about the incident. However, much like everyone else, he was reluctant to take the stand against Diddy. His only fear was jeopardizing his music group's deal, making silence seem like the safer option. Following this dark chain of events, Jane Doe was hospitalized for severe depression and dropped out of college. She then spent years trying to heal from the trauma that Diddy caused her before eventually leaving the music industry for good. However, Cassie's lawsuit forced her to face the ghosts from her past once more. For anyone thinking that Jane Doe might be trying to milk Diddy for money, given the recent controversy, take a listen to what Mark Curry has to say about Diddy. We used to go to the, when we go to the club, we used to have these bottles, right? And on this bottle, they'd be, they'd be regular Moet bottles. On them bottles right there, they'd be to have something to make the girls be real, real slippery and all of this kind of stuff. So when you get up, they'd be like, don't touch them bottles right there and only drink them bottles right there. So we already knew what the drill was. You just don't mess with them bottles, right? Then all of the girls is in the club after a while, they all running, look, opening up their mouth like little birds. He was running around just popping pills in their mouth. Pop, pill, 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 pill. During the tell-all interview, the former Bad Boy Records artist got real about how Diddy operates behind the scenes. According to Mark, he would invite anyone into his room for, you know what? Let me go to my puff room, see what they doing. And you knock on puff door, he'd be sitting there damn near butt naked. You ever just had a grown ass man answer his hotel door butt naked and they'd be like, come on in? You'd be like, mm, I'll come back. He compared Diddy's situation to that of R. Kelly, even hinting that more women might come forward in the future. What's interesting is that 50 pointed to something similar when Diddy settled the lawsuit with Cassie. He posted a screenshot of the story on his Instagram with the caption, LOL. He paid that money real quick. Should have done that before the shark saw the blood in the water. And here they come in five, four, three, two, one every woman he ever put his hand on. At this point, there's no doubt that Diddy has been abusing countless women over the years. As the relationships, I've seen him go through the relationship with Kim. I've seen um, his arrogance in the relationship. I've seen violent times with him in his relationships, not just with Kim, where I've seen him make in all of his relationships, if you ask me. While only a few of them have dared to take Diddy to court, a lot of them have revealed the truth in tell-all interviews. Gina Hugh, Diddy's ex, accused the record executive of stomping on her stomach and grabbing her hair. And that's not all. Upon learning that Gina was pregnant with her child, Diddy proceeded to pay her off to abort the baby. He like stomped on my stomach like really hard and I like took the wind out of my breath. I couldn't even, I couldn't breathe. And he kept, but he kept hitting me and I was like pleading to him like, can you just, can you stop? I can't breathe. That said, while Gina managed to break free from Diddy's influence, not everyone has been as fortunate. 
Kim Porter stands as a stark example of the repercussions that can unfold when one ventures too close to Diddy's orbit. At the end of the day, whoever's around him will, this is a, 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 the, the final notice, the final note, because he'll suck the life out of him like everybody else that he's been around. Although according to autopsy reports, Kim died due to complications from pneumonia. However, not everyone buys it. Jaguar Wright sure doesn't. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia likes. That said, the question is, why would Diddy take out the mother of her kids? Well, according to Jean Deal, Diddy's ex-bodyguard, Cassie's story is Kim's story. During the time Kim was alive, several sources revealed that Kim suffered intense abuse at Diddy's hands. However, things reached a turning point when it was revealed that Porter was left with a broken nose following an argument with Diddy. According to sources, Diddy had bugged Kim's phone and heard her talking to another man. Furious, he invited Kim onto a yacht in Saint Tropez under the pretense of having a good time. However, sources later spilled to the sun that by 2 a.m. they heard the couple arguing loudly. This went on for several hours. The situation got out of hand at 7 a.m. in the morning when they heard screaming. Apparently, Diddy had messed up Kim's nose during the argument, but he couldn't have Kim parading around with a broken nose in public. So allegedly, he flew in a plastic surgeon from Geneva and had Kim spend some days in a hotel until her nose healed and it was safe for her to be in public again, which is close to what Cassie described in her lawsuit. He broke Kim, uh, oh, let's, let's say allegedly, but it was told by people in her camp that he broke Kim's nose on a yacht. So Cassie's story is, Cassie's story is Kim's story. Cassie's book is Kim's book. If you were on the internet back then, you might remember seeing a few pictures of Kim with a bandage on her nose. However, all traces of these pictures have been erased from the internet now, and it's not hard to guess who was behind it. Unfortunately, Kim never revealed the truth about her busted nose. During interviews, she said that she had banged her nose on the table. But before you come for Kim, remember that she was still under Diddy's hold back then. Not to mention, she had to think of her three kids. So Kim wasn't exactly in a position to spill the beans. That said, Kim did plan to blow the whistle on Diddy in a tell-all book she was reportedly working on before her death. However, Kim's book never got to see the light of day, and fans think they know why. Her book could have easily ended Diddy's career and put him behind bars. It was Diddy's worst nightmare, which gives him a motive for murder. Strangely enough, it's not just the women. For years, there have been rumors about Diddy being on the DL, and until now, fans have been turning a blind eye to the allegations. However, Cassie's lawsuit inspired a long list of Diddy's victims to step forward, including Columbus Short. According to the actor, Diddy once rang him up for a late night booty call at two in the morning. Upon answer, Diddy expressed disappointment at Short not attending the BT Awards. So far, so good. However, things took a turn when Diddy randomly told Short that he was at the Hilton Hotel. Confused, Short asked him who he was with when Diddy informed him that he was alone. It's then that the purpose of the call dawned on Short. Fortunately, he knew better than to entertain Diddy's whims. What's more, even Cat Williams, the underrated king of comedy, was not marked safe from Diddy's advances. During a recent interview with Shannon Sharp, Cat revealed that like Dave Chappelle, he turned down a 50 million contract as well because he wanted to protect his integrity from someone like Diddy. Now I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times, just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right, uh, cause P Diddy be wanting to party. And you gotta tell him no. Oh, you gosh. got to tell him no. Now Columbus and Cat are alive and well. Unfortunately, most people who went up against Diddy back in the day can't say the same thing. Wendy Williams is a glaring example of what happens when you try to blow the whistle on one of the most powerful hip-hop moguls of all time. Fuck that up. Kirk Burroughs, I did an interview with him some months ago. And he told a story about Wendy Williams. She got fired from Hot 97 because she had a picture of Puffy. And she was saying on air that she was going to reveal the picture. 
During the early part of her career, the former broadcaster landed a job for New York City's Hot 97 radio station in 1994, a year after Bad Boy Records was founded. Despite Bad Boy artists being big on the radio, Wendy and Diddy did not get along. During an episode of the radio show The Wendy Williams Experience in 2009, Wendy revealed that the music mogul went as far as instructing members of Total, an all-female R&B trio, to fight her when she worked at the radio station. Recalling the incident, Wendy said, I got off the air one day, them Total Bees were downstairs, and everybody upstairs at the radio station was looking down, egging it on, waiting for something to go down. Thankfully, her boyfriend at the time stepped in before things hit the fan. But the question remains, why would Diddy go after a radio host? Well, there are two theories. According to one, Misa Hilton, Diddy's baby mama was at the radio station with her son, Justin Combs, who was only an infant at the time, along with bad boy rival Suge Knight. Apparently, Diddy got wind of his son and his mortal enemy being in the same room, and he wasn't happy. To make things worse, the streets were talking about Wendy snapping a picture of Suge playing with Diddy's kid and releasing it to the public. So that's when Diddy rounded up his soldiers and decided to put an end to the situation, the gangster way. However, according to another theory, it wasn't a picture of Justin and Suge that had Diddy all riled up. Apparently, Wendy had landed her hands on a photo of Diddy getting intimate with another man. The photo showed someone pulling down Diddy's shorts during his vacation in Cancun. Now, Wendy might not have been beaten up the way Diddy intended, but he did get her fired. And if you think Wendy is making up a wild story for a chance in the spotlight, then think again because Jean Deal confirmed her story during an interview with The Art of Dialogue. For whatever reason, Dude was playing with Puff. He went behind him and grabbed his trunks and pulled them down. When he grabbed his trunk to pull them down, some girls that was taking pictures. They took the, that picture and emailed it back to Wendy Williams. <laughs> Wendy Williams said she had him in a compromising position. According to him, Diddy did get a radio show host fired for a picture, and that's not all. In another interview, Gene talked about how Diddy and Ja Rule got up to some freaky business in a hotel room. Now at first, Gene didn't know what was happening in the room while he stood guard outside. But then Ja Rule's cousin came along. Next thing you know, somebody rang the doorbell. We had the presidential suite where we was at. So I opened the door and uh, the dude said, yo, I'm here for my cousin. I said, who your cousin? And he said, uh, Ja Rule. I said, well, he busy right now. He said, uh, he busy doing what? I said, he with Puff, they're in the room, they busy, they don't want to be bothered. Gene Deal ended up confronting Ja Rule's cousin and throwing him on the piano. The commotion caused Diddy and Ja Rule to step out of the room. And guess what? Both of them were in their towels. And threw him against the piano. When I threw him into the piano, Puff and Ja Rule runs out the room. Puff got his towel, Ja grabbing his towel, but they butt the naked. So was there a third person in the room or were these two at it with each other? Honestly, it's the 21st century. It's understandable why Diddy wouldn't want to come out in the 90s. The hip hop culture was not as open-minded back then, and a coming out moment would have probably made Diddy lose his street cred and mark the end of his career. Although things have only slightly improved in the industry, the music scene is still rife with homophobia. That said, in Diddy's case, the problem isn't that he goes around sneaking with men. For fans, it's the fact that he dangles promises of music deals in front of young artists only to sexually exploit them. So when you get, that's that's called the test off. How you make sure you breaking in. Little call, call the artist up here to the room, tell them I'm gonna have a meeting by my tub. He be in there by the tub and stuff, soaking and stuff. But at neck, you be like, that? By all accounts, Diddy has a long list of victims and people like 50 Cent intend to tell their story, which is why word on the streets is that Fifth is working on a Diddy documentary. A spokesperson for Jackson's production company, G-Unit Film and Television, confirmed the news to Billboard. Apparently, 50 plans to make a documentary about the essay allegations against Diddy and donate the proceeds from the film to the victims. 50 even posted the news on his Instagram with the caption, WTF, at some point, you gotta just do the right thing. And that's all about the beef between 50 and Diddy. Fifth, unlike others who may shy away due to Diddy's position in the industry, 
has embraced the role of a vocal opponent. And so the recent slew of allegations has begun to chip away at the foundation of Diddy's empire, posing a substantial threat to his long-standing reign in the hip-hop realm. Given the current situation, Fifth's documentary might prove to be the nail in the coffin. But the question lingers. Is Diddy truly on the brink of irreparable damage, forced to witness the unraveling of the career he built? Only time holds the answer to whether Diddy's empire will withstand the storm or succumb to the mounting challenges and controversies that now surround it. Until then, folks, keep it real and stay unapologetically rizzle.